Everybody has a dream, but with $50,000 on the line, would your dream stand out in this crowd? Let's find out how the crowd rules. Crowd Rules premieres May 14th on CNBC Prime. Coming up on The Susie Orman Show. Do you get stressed out when you're watching the show and therefore you feel like you have to change channels? Well, I'm going to tell you why The Susie Stress Factor is a good thing. Also, how did it make you feel when you heard me say $40,000 in credit card debt? It makes me cringe. That debt just, it's overpowering. And you asked me, can I afford it? I'd like to buy an engagement ring uh, for my girlfriend. Oh, I hate these. Hi, everybody. I'm Susie Orman, and you are watching The Susie Orman Show. Tonight, I want to talk to you about what I call the Susie Stress Factor. What is that? I'll tell you. We get emails. I look on Twitter, and I see tweets, and they kind of all go like this. Susie, I just can't stand to watch the show. When I watch the show, I get totally stressed out, and I have to, I have to do something else. I just have to turn it off, Susie. You're stressing me out. I love you very much, Susie, but I get stressed. Okay. I read it over and over and over again. And so then I thought, you know what? It has come time now that I address this. The question is, why do you get stressed? I'll tell you. You normally, when you're watching something and you're getting stressed, you're getting stressed because on some level it relates to you. You're not stressed out for the people that are calling into this show. All of you watch all of these shows where people are going through all kinds of stuff, these reality shows, and you're like, the worse for them, the better. You don't turn away. You get stressed out because this is a topic that probably you are watching that really is something that you're doing that directly affects your situation. And you're stressed out because you don't think you have what it takes to deal with it. You have what it takes to deal with anything, my friends. You just don't think you do. You know, one of the people I have to tell you who I see ha this happening with all the time, another person who stresses people out, is my great friend Jillian Michaels on The Biggest Loser. You see her with people on a treadmill, and, and they're ready to give up, and she's saying, don't you dare give up. Your mind is telling you to give up. Your body can do this. And then you see them fall down, and before you know it, you see them running a marathon and doing all kinds of things that they never thought they could do. Thought they could do. You simply are stressed because you don't think you can do the things that I'm asking other people to do. But I'm here to tell you, when you feel that way, that's the time that you should stay tuned. That's the time that you shouldn't go anywhere. Because what's going to happen in that moment is you're going to find out that you can deal with it. You can make a change in your life. You can turn your stress around. And you can go from not having something to having something, from debt to no debt, from no retirement to retirement, all kinds of things. But you have to work through the stress. So don't let your mind tell you to do something that's just going to sabotage you. Let your heart stick right with me and we'll get to where you need to go. All the way to Texas. Walter, what do you want to know tonight? Hi, Susie. Thank you for inviting me on your call, on your show. Um, I have an unusual situation. I, I'm getting married uh, this summer, and we've been together about two or three years now. And one of the agreements we had was that before we get married, we would pay off any debt um, prior to the marriage. We'd build a financial plan that gets us out of debt prior to the marriage and puts us on a budget that manages our finances in the long term. And I've, I've stuck to that. Um, my issue is, is that... Um, She's now spending money that should go to bills and things that are totally outside of getting rid of debt. And my concern is, is that I want to put off the wedding until I see that she is focused on paying, repaying debt and not doing things she's doing now, like hiding debt. She's gotten uh, additional debt since we've been together, totally outside of what we agreed on. So am I wrong to be worried that going into this uh, marriage that I'm putting myself in a, in a worse situation because I'm focused on paying off debt and 
she's incurring more debt and not being honest about the debt she has. Boyfriend, you're being so brilliant about this. I can't even stand it. As you were talking, I kept going, yes, 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 Walter. Yes, 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 yes. Postpone it. In fact, maybe even postpone it for the rest of your life. And, and my the- concern is that she's made it clear that, you know, if, if this doesn't happen on the date it's supposed to happen, she won't stick around. And I'm, I'm less worried about the sticking around part, but I don't want being a guy and, and being the way I am, and I can be a little legalistic, Am I just being too hard on her? No, you are being hard enough on her. She actually was being very hard on you. She's already, before you're legally married in Texas, which is a community property state boyfriend, which means half of everything that you have is going to be hers after that date. Everything. That should seriously be your concern. You're not the one who's being harsh. You have the well-being of the two of you at hand. You wanted you to both start on a solid financial foundation, and she's threatening you. She's saying, listen, my dear Walter, if it doesn't happen on this date, I'm out of here. You should wrap up a little tiny present for her and say, here is your freedom. Why wait till then? Go now. We are going to Texas. Sarah. Hey, Susie. Hey, Sarah. (laughs) Thanks for taking my question. Where in Texas are you calling from? I'm calling from Amarillo. This is up in the panhandle, yes. Uh, I've been in Amarillo. I was there for the Oprah Winfrey show when they were there all the way back when it was actually my first time ever on the Oprah (laughs) show was in Amarillo, Texas. Anyway, girlfriend. Yes. Okay. So my question is that my dad has established a Roth IRA for me. I'm now 31 years old. Um, I've never touched that IRA and it has about 18,000 in it. Um, I currently have about 20,000 in credit card debt. I do have a 401k through my employer that I do contribute to. My question is I'm living paycheck to paycheck because of my debt. Do I cash in the Roth IRA and pay the penalty and pay off my credit card debt? Here's the good news. There is no penalty to cash in that Roth IRA. Really? Yes. You can take out any money you want, regardless of how old you are, as and without any taxes or penalties, as long as we're talking about the money that was deposited into that account. Now, even though your father has been funding it for you, you obviously have a job. Right. right. So you're able to do that. So it's your money. And how much has he put in of the eighteen thousand dollars? Is any of it growth or is all of it what he originally put in for you? It's all what he originally put in. All right. If it's all what he originally put in, you take you can take out all eighteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars without any taxes or penalties. But here is the question. All right. What is the interest rate on your twenty thousand dollars of credit card debt? Well, that's the problem. It's a, I've been trying to get it down, and, uh, you know, I paid a little over 1000 in fees last year. Yes, but how much How much is the interest rate? Um, on the, and the on biggest average, card? On average. Um, about 15 All right, about 15% on average. Right. All right. The money that is in, now this is important, the money that is in your Roth IRA, what is it invested in? That I don't know. I mean, honestly, it's taken care of through a financial, I, you know, I just don't know what it's invested in. All right, so in. what concerns me, if it's invested with a financial person, that it's mm-hmm. possible they put it in to a variable annuity. Oh, it's okay. possible they put it into B share funds that even though you're not going to pay a penalty to the government to take it out, that you're going to pay a penalty to the mutual fund company to take it out. Oh, okay. So if, however, there are no fees or charges to the brokerage firm to take it out, I would take out the $18,000, pay off my credit card debt with it, and then every single month I would take that money and refund it back into my Roth IRA so that in essentially three years from now, that $18,000 or so will be back. James, coming to us from Indiana, ask me your question. Hi, Susie. Love you. Love your show. Thank you, James. I I have multiple credit card accounts with well over $100,000 of credit available to me. Yes. I never carry more debt in a month than I can pay off right away. Yeah. I have my emergency fund in place, so I don't think I need this much credit, and to reduce it would give me less to watch for protecting myself from identity theft. Yes. So 
So my question is, what can I do to slowly close some of the accounts without hurting my very excellent credit score? Yeah, I have to tell you, do any of these cards charge you a fee? None of them do. None of them do. And, and how many did you say you had? I have multiple. Um, it's 12 accounts that I have right in front of me. Yeah, and, and I've explained this in previous shows, and here's the truth of the matter, James. As long as you do not carry a balance on your cards. Now, obviously, everybody needs one or two credit cards. They don't really need much more than that. As long as you never carry a balance on your cards, the most important part of your score which besides is paying your bills on time, is your debt, how much you owe to your credit limit ratio. So as long as you don't really keep money on these cards, chances are it's not going to hurt you at all. So why don't you start with first just closing three? See what it does. Then close another three, all the way down until you have two or three cards at most. You don't need more than that. Beth is coming to us tonight from Illinois. Ask me your question. Are you there, Beth? Yes, I am. Good, Good evening, Susie. Good evening, sweetheart. What do you need to know? Well, my husband and I have been married for 25 years. We just celebrated in January. And for the last 10, I've been the sole provider. Um, he claims he's building a construction business, but it never seems to come to fruition. He brings no money into the family revenue whatsoever. I pay all the expenses. I work two jobs. I was brought up as a giver, but I'm tired, and I wonder if he'll ever grow up. I have used over $350,000 of my money to support his dream, and I'm feeling manipulated, used, and exhausted. I feel he's destroyed our and especially my future. What can I do? Take responsibility and change the words that he has destroyed your future to where you say, I allowed him to do so, or where you say, I take responsibility. I'm the one who used the $350,000 to save him. I'm the one who has allowed him to live this lifestyle as I have been codependent with him. As soon as you are willing to take on the responsibility for the situation you're in, meaning you have allowed yourself to stay there, meaning you have allowed yourself to use your money to let him live whatever lifestyle he wants, meaning that you have the power to change that regardless of him. Until you do that, your situation is never going to change. She celebrated her 25th year anniversary in January, last January, like you celebrated it? That was not a celebration, sweetheart. That was a lie. You stood in a lie and celebrated something that you feel manipulated, used and everything, and yet you celebrated an anniversary? Really? Okay, just thinking. For you to get off this credit card balance transfer train, you have got to come at this with more conviction than I see you displaying tonight. And later, when wanting something, ask me, can I afford it? My husband and I would like to hire a doula for the birth of our first child, which is coming up in two short months. But I have a feeling all the wonderful male viewers, they don't have a clue, Bethany, what you <laughs> are talking about. Hey, boyfriend, if your goal is to save, you're approved to wake up. Real-time updates on the markets, the news, the weather. And wake up with us. The CNBC Alarm Clock app. Free on the App Store and on Google Play. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We are now talking about how to get off the balance transfer train before it is too late. My one-on-one -on -one tonight is Heather. She's here from Cincinnati, Ohio. Heather is 32 and a nurse. She's married to Chris, who's 32 and a mechanic. They were high school sweethearts, I love that. Anyway, who married 13 years ago, and look at them. No wonder they got married. Anyway, they now have three children, 11-year-old twins, and an eight-year-old daughter. Here's the problem, however. Heather's been handling all the money by herself. She's been making ends meet by juggling the family credit card debt. It's now grown to $40,000. And she knows it's just a matter of time before she drops all the balls, which brings her to me. Hello, Heather. 
Hi, Susie. How are you tonight? I'm doing good. Yeah, how did it make you feel when you heard me say $40,000 in credit card debt? Makes me cringe. <laughs> what does it feel like that every month you have all of these credit cards, you don't know which one to pay, you're this and that, we're $50 a month every month short of being able to pay our bills, probably more months were even shorter than that. What's that feel like really? Um, it's frustrating because I feel like we both work so hard and we should have enough money and the credit card debt just sucks in everything that, anything extra that we have, it just, it's, it gets sucked into trying to pay those bills. Yeah, and when you were using those credit cards, when you were taking them out to do things with, what kind of things were you buying with those? Were they buying needs? Were they buying wants? Were they financing vacations? What were you really doing to amass $40,000 of credit card debt? Um, it's a combination of things like that. Um, some, if we needed to do some kind of repairs around the house or um, new appliances went into that. Um, and then a lot of times it was just using it at the grocery store or the gas station because we need the money in the checking account to pay the bills. Now, I have a question for you. The main yes. reason you came on the Susie Orman show was for what? I want to know how to eliminate that credit card debt because we've, I feel like we've started to, to try to, to live within our means a little bit better, but we have this just, and when I say that, I just mean within the past couple of months, but, um, but that debt just, it's overpowering. So if I were giving you a choice, if I could find extra money for you, if I could put you on a plan and you could take that money and either save it in an emergency fund, because you only have $2,300 to your name in emergency with three mm -hmm. kids, or take that money and get out of credit card debt, which one would you choose? I'd like to do both. I'd like to feel okay with having enough money and I want to get rid of the credit card debt as well. So listen, Heather, if our goal here really is to get off of this credit card balance transfer train, and that's what you feel like you're on, right? Yes, absolutely. So if that's really your goal, you're going to need to make some drastic changes. The first change that has to be made is you have four cars. There's only two of you. Now, I know this is going to be hard because your husband values these cars. He thinks of them as an investment. He doesn't have time to play anymore. We have $40,000 of credit card debt. We have no money in an emergency account. You owe it to your children. Not your husband so you guys can have four cars, but you owe it to your children to give them a vehicle they can be carried in known as security, and right now there isn't any for them. So it should not be a difficult decision. Cars or children, cars or children. Two cars have to go. The Chevy Nova has to go, currently worth about $4,000 of a blue book value. You don't owe anything on it. The next car that right. has to go is the 1972 Monte Carlo that you have. I understand mm -hmm. that you still owe money on it. You owe about $7,000, but it has a blue book of $10,000. That will leave you $3,000 when you sell it. That, along with the Nova, will give you $7,000. Now, we could take that $7,000 and put it in an emergency fund for you, but I am afraid you will just spend it and it will disappear before you even know what hit you. I would rather see you take that $7,000 and put it towards your Discover credit card, which in a few short months is going to go to an interest rate of 20 some odd percent. If you right. did that, it reduces your credit card debt from $40,000 to $33,000. It also reduces your credit card payments every month from what you're currently paying, which is about $687 a month, to about, what, $500 a month. Now, besides that, what I want you to do is make a few changes in how you are living. If this is something you really want to change, you have to make a commitment to doing this and stick with it. So currently, you spend about $500 a month on vacations, going to the Y, and things like that. Gone. 
Next, right, when you get rid of the Monte Carlo, it's going to save you $159 a month in car payments. It's also mm -hmm. going to save you about $50 a month in insurance when you get rid of the Nova and everything that you have. Plus, remember, we got rid of the Discover card, which was $187 a month. So in total, we have just found you $900 extra dollars per month. You add that to the $500 a month that you're currently now going to be paying on the credit card debt. That's $1,400 a month. You will be out of credit card debt, assuming you don't use them, in just two right. years. Two years, girlfriend. Now you're awesome. one. All right, there you go. Stick with that attitude. Two years, mm -hmm. you're out of credit card debt, and now you have. $1,400, $1,500 a month that you could put towards retirement accounts, towards savings accounts, towards, towards all of these things. And by then, you'll be in the habit of getting more pleasure out of saving money than you do spending it. Your husband won't want the play toys anymore because he's going to see how happy you and the kids are and how happy he's going to feel because he's not going to be aggravated when he does the bills with you. That <laughs> is your plan. But here's the bottom line. For you to get off this credit card balance transfer train. You have got to come at this with more conviction than I see you displaying tonight. You have to come at it with strength, joy, and you taking control because you are spinning out of control here, right? Right. I feel like we've tried to start that process already. Um, it's just a matter of finding the extra money to pay towards them to get them Well, I eliminated. just found you the extra money. I know. You have <laughs> to make it your life that you don't find excuses to not save yourself. And if you don't save yourself, you've got nobody to blame but you. Up next, you can't afford to miss. Can I afford it? I'd like to buy an engagement ring uh, for my girlfriend. You've been dating her seven months also. I would like my teeth to be as white as yours. Good luck. What do you want to buy? Hire a doula. An engagement ring. Cosmetic dental procedure. Certification and bookkeeping. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Can I Afford It segment. This is where you call in. You tell me what it is you want to buy. You know the drill, don't you? And I tell you if you can afford it or not. Are you ready, Bethany? What do you want to buy? Hi, Susie. It's so great to talk to you. I'm a Thanks. huge fan of your show. Thanks, Bethany. What do you want to buy? Well, my husband and I would like to hire a doula for the birth of our first child, which is coming up in two short months. And our goal is to have a natural childbirth. And we think that a doula will help us have the experience that we're hoping for. You know, I'm sitting here laughing to myself because I have a feeling all the wonderful male viewers that the Susie Orman show happens to appreciate, they don't have a clue, Bethany, what you are talking about. They're going, what does she want? A doula? What is a doula? So can you just tell everybody what a doula is? Absolutely. A doula is a trained labor support person who provides emotional, physical, and informational support to a woman and her partner uh, during labor. Especially because sometimes the partner tends to faint and you need the doula there to keep saying, come on, you can do this, you can do a lot. Never mind. That was just you a little joke. <laughs> All right, there you are. <laughs> Sweetheart, show me the money. Okay, for our income, we take home $7,035 a month, and that includes $1,395 a month in rental income. Yes. Our expenses are $5,596 a month. Yes. And for our debt, um, for our primary residence, we owe $184,000 on a 30-year fixed at 4.5%. On our rental property, we also owe $184,000, and that's a 15-year fixed at 3.38%. And we owe 3000 on a student loan at 2.14%. Good. For our savings, we have 44000 liquid, yeah. 7000 in investments, and 88000 in retirement. And where are you going to get this $750 from? From our liquid. Yeah, so here's the thing. Obviously, all the people who watch the Can I Afford It segment, they're looking at your emergency fund. They know you're a little short, but you do have other money in your retirement, your Roth, and so forth. And it's $750, and I actually think this is a need, not just a want. So in the book of Susie Orman, 
you have been approved. Yes, Our, yes John, what do you want to buy? Hi, Susie. Uh, huh. I'd like to buy an engagement ring uh, for my girlfriend. Oh, I hate these. It's always you want to spend $6,000 on an engagement ring for a girlfriend. And so much money. But anyway, not my position here to judge it, even though it's like, really? six. I don't even own a ring for $6,000. That's a lot. Anyway, show me the money. Okay. Um, I make uh, $3,400 a month net. Yeah, so you uh, want to work two full months almost to buy this engagement ring. Just thought I'd point that out to you. Go on. Yes, um, <laughs> and I have $2,080 in expenses a month. Mm -hmm. um, I own my home outright. Now that's um, great. Okay, and I have uh, no debt. Yes, no debt. Um, let's see, I have 134 dollars in savings. Yes. And in my retirement, I have uh, $49,000 in retirement. So I know you sound a little nervous, John, my dear one, but you have $134,000 in liquid, right? Yes. Yeah, you said $134. I think that's what you said. How are you going to pay oh. for this? Uh, well, I was thinking straight out of savings. Straight out of savings. You love this girl? Uh, we've been dating seven months, and I'd like to propose by the end of the year. I love her very much. <laughs> Oh, God, John, I thought you were going to say you've been dating seven years and that you oh. love her more than life itself. And you've been dating her seven months. And after seven months, you feel like you really know her and that you're going to spend six thousand dollars. It's almost a thousand dollars a month for every month that you've known her. And you're going to propose to her and whatever. Can you afford it? You're approved. Should you do it? I don't think so. Anyway, Keith, what do you want to buy? Hi, Susie. I would like my teeth to be as white as yours. Good I'm luck. I'm looking to spend $1,500 <laughs> for a cosmetic dental procedure that will remove spots from my two front teeth that were caused from having braces when I was younger. I had braces, too. You know, I haven't spent $1,500 on my teeth to make them this white. I just thought I'd tell you that. But why is it that you can't just use the strips like I do? I've tried those before. My dentist had recommended uh, this procedure, though. Oh, wait, so wait, is this because your dentist wants to do it, or did the strips work? Did you actually try the strips? I did try the strips. They were unsuccessful. Unsuccessful, and you tried them for a long time? Yes. All right, boyfriend, show me the money. I currently take home $6,400 yeah. a month. Yeah, so those I are have... your teeth I'm looking at there, huh? Yes. Yes, all right, it, my little 24-year-old. All right, so <laughs> they don't look so bad. But anyway, go on. So you have $6,400. I, I take $6,400 a month. I have $1,147 a month in expenses. Yeah. I live rent-free with my parents currently. Oh, yeah. I have no debt. I have $15,000 in savings and $21,000 in a 401k. All right. So how much does this really bother you that your teeth have whatever they have on them? Uh, enough that I want to spend $1,500 to fix it. <laughs> All right. And you know the dentist is good? Yes. Absolutely. All right. You have been approved because you have the money to do so. Can you send us a picture after he does it? Anyway, we have Angel. Hey, girlfriend. Love you. Love you so. Thank you so much, Angel. What do you want to buy? Susie, I need to take some classes to get my certification in bookkeeping. And also, you need to spend $2,000 so you can make sure that all the numbers for other people really add up, correct? That's right. All right. How could I ever refuse somebody by the name of Angel? We have a guy here at CNBC. His name is Angel. He is such an angel. I love this guy. But anyway, show me the money. Sure. Our monthly combined income is $6,878. Yes. Our expenses are $5,855. Yes. And our mortgage debt is $121,000 for a 15-year Fixed. Yes. Uh, E-lock is at fifteen thousand. Yeah. And ten thousand in credit card debt. Um, my savings is twenty-one k liquid, thirteen k in investments, and three hundred sixty-three k in retirement. And how are you going to pay for this? I was going to use two thousand from investments because I have some stock that's going to be sold in July, and I'm going to be getting a check for that. So I thought I could use that towards this. And how much did you tell me your monthly expenses were? 
5855 yeah. So you're a bookkeeper, right? So yes. let's just round that up to $6,000. So you need $48,000 in an emergency fund, correct? That's correct. For, before I'd like for to see you spend any money. But here's my question. If you take this course, do you think you're going to earn back that $2,000 very quickly? Definitely. I can say I'm, I'm currently working now. Like I went through a period of unemployment last year, so that's why this got me thinking. Yeah. So when, once I get certified, I can definitely take some uh, part-time work and to make up that money and, and actually put it in my, my liquid. Yeah. You know, so I'm looking at this as an investment in your future. You are approved, by the way, because I do think you need to make a little bit more money. And I do think a lot of people need bookkeepers, especially older people. So, Angel, there you go. Want to be part of the Can I Afford It segment? All you have to do is go to my website, SusieOrman.com, and you'll find the information that you need to know there to come right here. Also, Get a t-shirt if you do, so I could either approve or deny you. Next, I tackle trending topics in Ask Susie. Do you have any credit card debt? Not uh, very minimal, uh, what, under what? 2000 Under 2000 And do you have an eight-month emergency fund? No, no, you don't either. That is the problem here. Welcome back, everybody. Here we are in the control room at CNBC headquarters. Financial Literacy Month all month. What are you learning about your money? Listen, if you want to learn about money, this is the place to come. So there are so many places and so many ways that you can reach me. Take a look at your screen. You can send in an email. You can join me on Facebook. Or if you send in a tweet and put hashtag Ask Susie, it comes right to us. If we choose it, we will answer it on the air. Let's see what a tweet can teach for this Financial Literacy Month right now. At Zabrina Horton, can I get a personal loan to pay off a student loan if the personal loan interest rate is lower than the 9% student loan? Sabrina, the fact that you have a 9% student loan tells me you have a private student loan. Because you have a private student loan, that 9% could go to 10%, 11%, 13%, wherever they want to take it. So if you can get any kind of loan to pay off a student loan, you are 10 times better off bar none. Now, if you can get a personal loan with just a signature at a bank or something like that, absolutely do it. Because if you also ever get in trouble, that you can bankrupt a student loan. You cannot. But if you decide to take a personal loan from a friend, from a relative, you better treat it with the utmost of respect. You better pay it on time and never, ever skip a payment because they are giving you something that is valuable to them and you should value it as well. Let's see what else we have trending. At Gridler, what is the order of priority for saving? Retirement versus emergency fund versus 529 for kids. So here's what I would say. I've always told you, don't be an all or nothing investor. Don't just do one thing and not other things. You should absolutely save for an emergency fund and retirement at the same time. The 529 plan for kids, you can put off because if the kids have to play, pay for it on their own, that's their problem. It actually builds stamina, it builds strength in them rather than you taking care of them all the way through college. With that said, a Roth IRA, remember, a Roth IRA, you can withdraw any money you put in without taxes or penalties, regardless of your age. So you could be funding both an emergency fund and a Roth IRA and treat the Roth IRA as a possibility to get money from in case of an emergency. Let's go to our webcam right now. We are going to Joanne in Florida. Girlfriend, what do you want to know? Hi, Susie. Thanks for taking my question. Well, my husband and I, we have a difference of opinion. We do not agree on how the best way to save for our children's edu college education. We have a two-year-old, and we have another one on the way. I wanted to do a, pre -pay a prepaid Florida college tuition plan so you could lock in today's rate. 
he went ahead and opened a Coverdale education savings fund. Um, I think that's a little risky just because it's, it can fluctuate. And I also don't like the fact that you can't lock in the rates. So I just wanted to know what you think. Well, first of all, very quick answer to this is I like the prepaid plan over the Coverdale. But why did he do that without even telling you? He just went ahead and he did something. Did that surprise you? Well, it, it did, but I think what he, he was trying to get something opened by Elliot's first birthday so that if, if our relatives wanted to contribute a present, they had an option of contributing to a fund. Got it. And just one other quick question here. Do you both fully fund your Roth IRAs? No. No, I see. Uh, do you have any credit card debt? Not uh, very minimal. Uh, what, what? Under 2000 Under 2000 And do you have an eight-month emergency fund? No, no, you don't either. That is the problem here. You don't, don't have, have the money to do what? Be funding your children's college education. You have to take care of your own needs first until you are maxing out your Roth IRAs. You have a full eight-month emergency fund until you're totally out of credit card debt, until you have those things in place. Really, everybody? Now, I understand your husband's going to be saying, but it's for the gifts for the children. I don't know. Those gifts may be better used to do what? Pay for their needs right now, because you obviously don't have the money to do so. Let's go back to the studio, and here's what's coming up next. Sarah wants to know, Susie, how am I doing? It took me 11 years and $65,000 in student loans to earn my PhD. So here you are, and you have a negative net worth of $26 thousand dollars so what grade would i give you welcome back to the Susie orman show hi Susie. i'm 36 and single but in a committed relationship it took me 11 years and sixty-five thousand dollars in student loans to earn my phd so now, after working full-time for a little over six years, I still feel I'm behind in reaching my financial goals. I have a second job, and I'm making progress, but I can't keep up this pace forever. My goal is to retire at 65, but I still want to be able to travel now. Susie, how am I doing? So, Sarah, the traveling bug has hit you, huh? Sure has, Susie. All right, so what I'm reading into this question that you're asking me, and the grade is... Are you on the path to be able to retire at 65 and travel at 65 or even maybe travel earlier than that, correct? Correct. All exactly right. right. Let's, let's see. What would you going to give yourself a grade? What would it be? I would give myself a C minus. A C minus. Let's show everybody your money and then I'll give you my grade. Retirement. Okay. Here you are. You're 36 and you have $23,000 in retirement. You have only $5,700 in an emergency fund. You have $54,000 of student loan debt. So here you are at the age of 36, and you have a negative net worth of $26,000. Let us continue. Yep. Right. Your income in comparison to your expenses, after tax, you're bringing home $5,400 about. Your monthly expenses are about $3,500. So you have an excess of about $2,000. Of that $2,000, you do take that money and you fund your Roth IRA. You put money in emergency funds. But it still leaves you, according to the paperwork that you filled out, about $900 a month extra. So what grade would I give you? I have to tell you, at 36 years of age, based on how you're doing right now and the path that you're on, I'd only give you a C minus. I would agree with you. I would even be kind of tempted to give you a D. Now, why am I giving you those grades? Number one, you don't have enough money in your emergency fund. Yep. Number two, you, you don't have enough money in your retirement accounts currently. Number three, you don't have a will and you don't have a trust. 
and you're not fully funding your Roth IRA currently to the max. You're still using last year's maximum versus this year's maximum. If you continue to do everything exactly the way that you're doing it right now, Right now, no changes, so you don't stop working two jobs. You bring in everything the way that you're doing. In 29 years, you would have after-tax income of $4,270 a month. Your goal is around four or 5000 a month. That's not with travel, however. At 65, if you stay working in this system all 29 years, your pension at the age of 65 given working all that time, is going to be about $8,700 a month. However, that's not what you wanted to do. You wanted to be able to also possibly travel before that. So here is your way to an A. Obviously, you need to get yourself a will and a trust. You need to start taking that $900 a month that's in excess and start putting it in your emergency fund so that you have at least an eight-month emergency fund. You need to increase your Roth IRA to the max. After you have enough of an eight-month emergency fund, and that can be divided between your Roth IRA and your liquid money, you are then to take that $900 a month and pay it towards your student loan debt. It is possible that if you did that, you would be out of student loan debt in four or five years. After that, if you then wanted to take that money, some of it, not all of it, but half of it, and you wanted to travel, okay, other than that, I still want to see you putting all this money away in savings because we don't know if you're going to be able to make it all the way to 30 years or in, in working. Something could happen to you, so you never get that pension. So... The truth of the matter is, the way to an A is save, 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 and just continue to dream about traveling. Up next, one more thing that I want you to know. And a lot of times, the problems that you have in your real life, so to speak, the relationship with a loved one, shows up in your money. Welcome back to The Suzy Orman Show. Well, that's almost a wrap here on The Suzy Orman Show. But before we go, here's still one more thing I want you to know. Earlier tonight, as we were taping this show, we have a makeup artist that sits just about over there, actually. And I hear her say to one of the cameramen, you know, this isn't really just a show about money. This is really a show about relationships. And when I heard that, I realized... She was surprised. She was surprised that that's what this show was about. But this show is about relationship because what I want you to know is that each and every one of you out there is in relationship with your money. It is what you decide to do with your money. It's, that's the relationship. And a lot of times, the problems that you have in your real life, so to speak, the relationship with a loved one, shows up in your money. And you use money as an excuse to have to deal with the relationship that you're in. So this really is a lifestyle show. This is a show about every single relationship that you could possibly have, not just with your money, but with your loved ones, your children, your parents, your employees, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, everybody. So if you could just think about this show like a lifestyle show and it's fun to watch rather than you getting stressed out about it, which we already dealt with at the very top of this show, I'm here to tell you, you'd have a lot of fun sticking with me. Now you know. There's also only one more thing that I want you to know when it comes to your money and it is this, people first then money, then things. Hey, Mr. Jones and my friends in El Paso, Texas, I'm going to be seeing you soon. Now all of you stay safe.